One of the most important things in cataract surgery is a pupil size. Unfortunately, in many patients, there will be inadequate response to topical or intracameral mediatic agents, resulting into a small, poorly dilated pupil of about 4 mm in size, and that is what termed as nano pupil. Nano pupil can obscure the visualization and increase the risk of complications. Now this is the other eye of one of my patient. I have already experienced the small pupil with intraoperative floppy iris syndrome in his first eye. And I was expecting the progressive intraoperative meiosis and also the iris prolapse from main corneal wounds. So I decided to use hooks in this case. Four additional paracentesis were made and nylon disposable hooks were introduced into the anterior chamber. Thus, adequate pupillary dilatation was achieved. Now, the FACO was completed using direct chop technique. At the end of the surgery, the hooks were removed and chamber was closed by stromal hydration. Various other techniques have been also described to perform successful FACO in nano pupils. Most of these techniques provide adequate pupillary dilatation, however, they also suffer from some disadvantages such as extended surgical time, new incision, cost, iris trauma, increased uveal response and permanent pupillary distortion. This is the one month post-operative picture where you can see the permanent pupillary distortion which may lead to glare and photophobia problems. However, in many cases, it may not be necessary to use such pupil retracting hooks. Now this is a case of stable nano pupil. The small size pupil leads us to create a small size rexis. And it is very difficult to perform a FACO through such a small opening. Also, the chances of capsular phimosis are more with small rexis. So all of these problems can be avoided by making a rexis larger than the size of pupil. And to achieve a larger rexis, make sure that the leading edge of the rexis should extend beyond the pupil margin under the iris. But this requires a better control or else it will be blindly extended. So stay in the capsule, inject the visco intermittently and one may actually lift the iris with Sinsky hook to observe the position of rexis to achieve the better control. Now after doing hydro dissection and nucleus rotation, the first step of FACO is the initial crack using chopper and FACO tip. The center of endonucleus was buried with FACO tip and then the vertical element of chopper was depressed posteriorly to initiate the crack. Now the heminucleus was mechanically divided into multiple small fragments using FACO chop technique. Make sure that chopper movements are restricted within the rexis margin. If it moves from periphery to center, it may tear the anterior capsule and rexis margin. Then the divided smaller nuclear fragments can be consumed within the central area at pupillary plane. Sometimes it may be necessary to bring these fragments out of the bag above the plane of pupil. But always protect the corneal endothelium while emulsifying them above the plane of pupil. Now, the epinucleus can be aspirated with the FACO tip. Coming to the irrigation aspiration, accessing the full 360 degree cortex in a small pupil with a traditional coaxial IA tip is really challenging. So, I prefer biomanual IA tip where you can actually lift the iris with irrigation tip and cortex can be aspirated easily. In addition, you can also switch on the hands which will give a better access to full 360 degree cortex. So this is how using the no hooks no rings technique you can achieve the perfect round and normally reacting pupil in the post operative period. Now in this case multiple complicated situations were present. Patient was having kyphosis, so I had to do entire surgery in an abnormal posture. This is a case of old uveitis with secondary glaucoma. There was a filtering blab, nano pupil with posterior synechia and pupillary membrane, 
complicated white cataract where the rexis also got extended and there was a progressive intraoperative meiosis so first of all i have done the synecolysis using the spatula then i have peeled off the pupillary membrane and after that with visco midriasis i could achieve adequate pupillary dilatation but unfortunately you can see here my rexis has got extended from one side so i try to complete the rexis from other side using cystitome and utrata forceps now here the problem is as soon as i enter with faco tip pupil was becoming smaller and smaller you can see the progressive intraoperative meiosis so in such situation what i did was once the tip was buried i tried to perform maximum chops without breaking the occlusion which may prevent catching the meiotic pupil inadvertently and it also reduces the repeated attempts induced stress to zonule and extended rexis margin repeated viscomidriasis was performed and the second heminucleus was also divided into the multiple small fragments in a similar manner in such case we have to make as small fragments as possible which can be consumed very easily the main challenge in such a situation is proper understanding of fluid dynamics and doing slow motion faco to prevent inadvertent aspiration of uveal tissue or posterior capsule so coming to the take home message of this video presentation faco in a small pupil is really challenging several intraoperative techniques and pupil expanding devices like rings and hooks are available selection of pupil expanding technique depends on surgeon skill and preference and also on the individual intraoperative situation however in many cases it may not be necessary to use such pupil retracting hooks which can cause permanent pupil distortion post operatively so coming to the conclusion using no hooks no rings technique normal pupil configuration can be achieved in a selected group of patients with minimum or no pupil widening manipulation thank you so much for the patient listening